Over the past few months, I've been using the AccuWedge system to produce a large number of segmented eggs. As I was producing these segmented projects, I developed several new accessories for the AccuWedge system and also added the sacrificial fences to the index table for the more accurate slicing of the small segmented wedges. This video describes the various improvements and techniques and accessories for the AccuWedge system in order to improve its performance. The following topics will be discussed and demonstrated in this video. These updates were described in a number of previous videos. This video combines and summarizes all of these updates into a single video. I included this timetable should you wish to fast forward to that particular section of this video. For additional details on producing accurate segmented wedges with the AccuWedge system, please watch this YouTube video. Over the past several months, I've been making a lot of segmented wood eggs, commonly called Pisanki eggs, both larger eggs such as this, and also some miniature eggs. And these were all described in some previous videos. And in doing so, I made a bunch of changes to my AccuWedge system to improve its performance. And most of these changes were noted in some of those previous videos. But I want to put all the changes together in one video to explain what changes I made to the system and how these changes will improve the performance of the AccuWedge system. One of the first changes was to replace the course adjustment knobs on the Accu uh, slice index table with these larger brass thumb screws. They're just a little bit larger than the previous thumb screws. Just makes it much easier to turn, to turn these to tighten up the index table. So it's uh, just another improvement to the system to make it easier to use. The other change I made is to replace the roller bearings on the Accu wedge table. And also actually on my carriages, I've also used these new uh, roller bearings. The previous roller bearings are these polycarbonate wheels. And they work pretty well, but they tend to crack with time, especially as sawdust gets impacted into the roller bearings. It gets too much pressure on it and actually cracks, cracks the polycarbonate wheel. So I replaced it with these Delrin roller bearings, which uh, actually ride much smoother on the index table. If I move this index table, you see how smooth that rides now. So these are definitely an improvement over the previous roller bearings. Just gives you a smoother riding index table. And I can show those on the bottom of the table here. Yeah, there's four of them on here, and I replaced all four of those. So to adjust my uh, index table, the first thing I do is I release my mag jig clamps, uh, push my index table, and open my uh, course adjustment knobs, push it in until it's close to the bandsaw blade, and then I can use my fine adjustment to adjust it to like there, it's touching the table. I glue it back so it's just clear of the of the bandsaw blade, so it's not touching the bandsaw blade. So I get as close as I can without touching the bandsaw blade. Then I lock my magic clamps in place. Now the next two changes I made are some major improvements to the Accu slice and Accu wedge system, and that's first of all this secondary dust shield. The Accu wedge system does have a dust shield here which protects from the top down. But sawdust tends to get underneath and come around the side and get into the roller bearings. And those roller bearings, usually I have to clean those after every you know, maybe 20, 30 uh, wedges. They just, the sawdust builds up in there and if you don't clean them, you're gonna uh, damage your roller bearings. So as a result, I was cleaning those pretty frequently, especially with this last project. In the previous project, I just made 19 segmented eggs. I probably cut five, 600 uh, segments and it would have been a real problem to clean those roller bearings if I didn't make some changes. So I made this what I call a secondary dust shield. It has three magnets that attach it to the bandsaw table and this protects the uh, dust from getting into the roller bearings from the table up. So I have this dust shield here protecting from the top down. This protects from the bottom up and this double dust shield is much like the uh, dust shield on the uh, the AccuWedge system that mounts uh, directly on the index table with, without using the AccuWedge system, AccuSlice system. But this is, actually does a much even better job. So this actually you adjust by pushing it against the rail with these magnets. This has a, an index here that goes, goes, goes around the primary dust shield and just sits against the table like that. So now I have a double system here. I'll probably show it better here. I have my uh, standard Dust shield protecting from the top down, this secondary dust shield protecting from the bottom up, and there's almost no chance for sawdust to get underneath there and up and around. It's a nice clean system. 
right real close to the tabletop. And so I push this out to at the edge of the table. So sawdust is pretty hard to get into the roller bearings. In fact, this la that last set of videos I did in which I made 19 segmented eggs, I never cleaned the roller bearings even once. And when I took the table off, they were still perfectly clean. This, this uh, double dust shield did a great job of keeping the uh, roller bearings clean. And if you're using an AccuOS system, I would definitely recommend this. This would eliminate problems with the uh, roller bearings getting uh, clogged with sawdust. So that was a major change. The second major change I made was this new ramp. The previous system used a metal ramp, which was flexible and, you know, sometimes it would vibrate and hit the bandsaw blade. But the real problem is when I was making these small segments for these small miniature uh, eggs, the uh, wedges were actually getting or trapped between the bandsaw blade and the ramp. And uh, every now and then it would, it would get caught and then just start vibrating and chew up the, the wedge. So what I did is I made this new ramp. Again, this is uh, printed off by 3D printer. I designed it, I spent a lot of time getting the dimensions all tweaked in. It has a number of features. First of all, it has a magnet on the bottom which attaches it to the bandsaw table. It has a groove here which goes around the bandsaw blade. So it's a real tight fit against the bandsaw blade. It has two lips here that actually slide underneath the AccuWedge table. And the height is adjusted, it's right at the top level of the index table. And the way this is installed is you push it against the bandsaw blade, like this, so it's tight against, you can see the bandsaw blade rides in that groove, these lips right underneath the index table, I have my double dust shield, it's really hard for sawdust now to get, you know, past that. But the major thing now is the gap between the ramp and the index table is, is less than ten thousandths of an inch. And as a result, when I was making, making these uh, small wedges, they didn't get trapped in there because there was no gap in there to, for them to get trapped in. So this worked much better. So if, if you're updating your AccuWedge system, the two features I would really recommend are this uh, dust shield and this new ramp. They're major improvements to the system. The other feature about this uh, ramp is now it's per perfectly perpendicular to the uh, index table. So now I can use my Acu stop. I don't have to worry about it being cocked. I just slide it against the ramp and it's, it's perfectly square, so you don't have to worry about it being out of square. So that just mounts against the uh, next table like that and clamps in place. So the next feature I made was this uh, new dust shield with an offset neck. Now what I was trying to do is create a, a dust collection system that would collect sawdust getting on top of this uh, ra uh, ramp, but also I put some uh, dividers in here so it doesn't collect the, uh, the small wedges. Now the small wedges from here, uh, they were going, getting close to getting into there, so I, did, I, I didn't use this when I was making these miniature segments, but for larger segments it worked fine. But this came out on either side of the index table, either left or right, and getting it close to the, you know, put, usually I put it something like that, getting it close to the blade to collect some of the sawdust. Uh, it helps, to collect, it doesn't collect all the sawdust, but it collects a good bit of it. The next change in the system was to add some new sacrificial fences to the Accu wedge system. What I found was happening when I was cutting wedges with this right hand fence, there's a, 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 a taper on this side. And that taper is there to enable this uh, fence to rotate for the different angles to get different size wedges. And that worked fine for these larger wedges, but I was getting a small wedges, that curvature you know, was small enough that I could actually get vibration there and get, I was getting inaccurate cuts. And so what I was able to do is, is create some sacrificial fences. In this case, this is uh, some cherry. It's about uh, a, little, a little over an eighth of an inch thick, and I sand it nice and smooth. The sides are perfectly parallel, and I'll be attaching this to the rail like this. And that fills this gap here. So now when I'm cutting my wedges, I have full support on my system. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put some double-sided tape on here. I'm going to use some very thin double-sided tape, clamp it in place, and then I'll cut it off. I'm setting my angle. I'm going to be making some wedges that are going to be uh, 32, 36 segments uh, per disc. And so I'll do. I'll, I'll mount this on here, clamp it in place, cut it off, and now I have a, a support that's tight against the bandsaw blade. There's no chance for a vibration at the end of that uh, piece. 
So when I put my wedges on here now, it'll be cutting off perfectly square. And also by having that thing go right to the very edge, it minimizes the, uh, uh, the burr on the end of the wedges. So the burr is actually actually smaller using this new system. So I'll be mounting this on both, both my fences. And uh, if I change my angle, I'll probably change it to a different one because I want to get a real nice tight fit uh, against the bandsaw blade. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me put some uh, double-sided tape on this and then we'll mount these. Okay, I just uh, added some double-sided tape to these uh, sacrificial fences. And as I said, it's very important that these uh, fences be perfectly parallel. If they're not parallel, you're going to get inaccurate uh, segments. So I actually um, made these, this is a piece of cherry. I actually ran it through my board sander to make sure it was perfectly parallel and then measured it was accurate within, you know, less than a thousand of an inch tolerance the entire length. And I'm using very thin uh, double-sided tape. Like I'm using what's called x fastening tape. I buy on Amazon. It's a very thin tape. I've used it in the past on projects. It works pretty well. So let me uh, pull the tape, tape off here. And I'm going to put it so it goes past the bandsaw blade because I want to cut it off. And I, I mill these to the exact height of my fences. And likewise, I'll do the, uh, the second fence. I've already adjusted everything. My table's adjusted, my blade's adjusted, my uh, ramp's adjusted. So I, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna move these in the future. I wanna get it perfectly uh, fight, uh, flat against the bandsaw blade. So let me go and cut these off. The bandsaw didn't cut through the tape, so I had to pull it back and took a knife and then trimmed off the tape so it cleared. And I repeated this same process on the second fence. So now I can put a Put my clamps back on my on my rail, and now when I cut a board and mount it on here, to cut it off, it's fully supported right to the very edge. So let me go and cut this off, and I'll show you how that uh, looks. Turn my laser beam on. Now you can see there to cut that wedge right perfect flat against this uh, sacrificial fence. Now if I pull this off, so when I pull this off, you know, there's no burr there, or a very, very small burr. And now I go to the, uh, the second fence, and adjust my, my wedge, clamp it in place. Cut this. And you can see, once again, I cut that wedge right against this sacrificial fence, perfectly straight. And the wedge that came off does have a small burr. But it's much smaller than it would normally you get with the AccuWedge system. So it's a definitely an improvement with the system. Just give you more accurate cuts. Especially when you're doing very small uh, segmented disc. So once again, when I'm cutting additional segmented disc, I need to set my Accu stop. So I just you know, push it against the, the carriage. I adjust my length for my wedge. In this case, I'm making it to very, very small wedges. I can set my Accu stop, you know, clamp it in place, and now I'll be getting accurate cuts for all my wedges. So now I'm all set to make a set of, of 36 of these wedges to make a segment of disc.
Now, I did make a previous video on how to get perfect segment wedges, and I'll put a reference to that in the uh, description for this video. There's a lot of good pointers in that video to get perfect wedges, you know, from things, making sure you use clamps, you know, making sure your uh, bandsaw blade is perfectly perpendicular to your, your table. There's a lot of different pointers in there, but one thing I probably didn't emphasize enough is your board must be perfectly square. If the board's not square, you're going to get rocking here. And if you get that rocking, you get inaccurate cuts. One wedge will be slightly different than the other. So I make an effort to get my boards not only perfectly parallel, but also perfectly square. So now I'm setting it up to, uh, to cut some wedges. And I'm getting some wedges to go to almost a perfect point, a very, a very, very small gap in the center. Uh, so let me go and cut 36 of these wedges, and then we'll sand them and assemble them into a segmented disc. So I have this set now. You know, I put it against my stop, push it against my bandsaw blade, and, you know, it's just, I, I don't feel the teeth of the blade at all. So it's a little bit of a, a point, or a little bit uh, of a flat edge on the very edge. So I said, let me go ahead and cut 36 of these, and we'll assemble them into a segmented disc. Actually, what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be taking these, I'm going to be putting, putting spacers between the discs to give a contrast between the, uh, the different segments. Actually, I can lower my... Stop. I also can hook up my vacuum. Okay, so everything's all set up. I got my vacuum set up on the back here. Okay, I did speed up this video five times the actual cutting speed for viewing purposes. And I also edited it so you don't need to see the entire cutting of the 36 wedges. Okay, a little bit of sawdust on the table here. Nothing down in here, perfectly clean. And if I pull this off, take a look at the roller bearings, they should be perfectly clean. So let me uh, take these wedges. A little bit, a little bit of a burr. I mean, you always get the burr because the way it cuts off, but uh, it's a lot smaller burr than I normally see. So let me go and clean these up a little bit, and then we'll assemble them into a segmented disc. Okay, and there's the uh, the finished. Segment of disc. So that was 36 segments, and I put uh, 36 maple spacers between them. So a total of 72 pieces in that. This concludes this video on improvements I've made to my AccuWedge system to improve its performance. For additional details on improved performance of the AccuWedge system, be sure to watch the other video on optimizing the performance of the AccuWedge wedge system to get perfect wedges. I'll put a reference to that video in the description of this video. That video has a lot of good pointers and tips on how to get perfect wedges with the AccuWedge wedge system. If you do have an AccuWedge wedge system, I would definitely recommend getting both the secondary dust shield and this new ramp. Both of these systems offer improved performance for the system and keep your roller bearings much cleaner. By keeping those roller bearings cleaner, requires less maintenance, you'll have better wedges with your AccuWedge system. All the accessory products for the AccuWedge system are described in the What's New section on the AccuSlice homepage. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, as always, please give us a call or drop us an email. Always happy to hear from you.